Caleb Wallen and Caleb, we just wrapped up the major season and uh, underwhelming way, maybe depends on who you are, depends on how you, you viewed the open championship that just took place. Um, but Brian Harmon won the open championship in extremely convincing fashion. Uh, I think that if his name was Rory McElroy or Scotty Scheffler or John Rahm or something, they would be touting this as the greatest open championship performance in years. But because it's Brian Harmon and he's not a big name and he's not what some people would call a sexy winner, it's not as, uh, I don't know, I guess it's more of everybody else just wasn't as good as Brian Harmon and Brian Harmon won. And uh, But either way, we wrapped up major season. It's always a sad time. I think that as, as long as I've been paying attention really to the big majors, um, I know that people, some people are used to kind of having that August major, but now we have the one in May. Um, so like I'm a little used to this, but I know a lot of people aren't. I wish that we had another major or I wish that maybe the schedule was adjusted um, so that we did have something in August, but also um, I, I like the setup that it is now. But Caleb, what do you, you think of Brian Harmon winning, winning the Open Championship? Yeah, I mean, I I would have never put him up there. I'll I'll be the first one to say that. Um, you know, we've been talking about the last couple of years, like distance is king, um, and Brian Harmon does not have distance by any means. Um, but it was very apparent that like he's accurate. And watching that last round, like I kept seeing all the other guys in the rough or in the heather, and Brian Harmon was he was in the fairway or he was in the first cut. And I think that made a ton of difference. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he scorched the field. I mean, it is what it is. You, you can say that weather was a factor on day four. I don't really care. I mean, he still, he he went out there and he did it. He literally just fried everybody that was out there. Yeah. I mean, he, he came out in convincing fashion and then he just didn't let up. Like there were, multiple opportunities where it could have went wrong and it just didn't go wrong or that he like he corrected it so quickly like he would bogey or he would like go ob and the next thing you know he's either saving par or he's uh making a birdie on the next hole like man he just it, it was it was pretty convincing um I, again it did make for a pretty boring sunday um but again not to Brian Harmon's fault. Hey, he was just playing golf, man. Like he was just doing right. his thing. So congrats to him. Don't have anything bad to say about Brian Harmon. I know that there were people that did, which whatever. Which I'll, but... I'll touch on that here in a second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, go for it. I mean, go for it now. So I think that's hilarious. Like the, the fact that in his, you know, press press conference afterwards, he was like, well, if they would have been nicer to me, I probably would have lost. Yeah, like yeah. To me, so for the viewers at home, you can't really see, but I have the Ryder Cup shirt on because that's the next thing that I care about. I mean, the Tour Championship's cool. Don't get me wrong, but as far as my schedule goes, like we're gearing up for the Ryder Cup. Oh yeah. And if Brian Harmon can go over there, go scorched earth on all those guys over there, take the heat from those guys or from the fans over there. Yeah. I think they're scared of Brian Harmon. After this week, I sure. am not convinced that they are not scared of Brian Harmon. And this is not an original thought. I saw it on Twitter, so I'm sorry to whoever came up with it first. I, I can't give you your, your props. But um, <laughs> ha if Brooks makes the team, somebody said that they should put Brooks and Harmon together and then just watch them essentially not care and still just wax everybody. Because yeah. that was the other thing that I noticed while watching Brian Harmon was he was very like not too high, not too low, like he was out there to he was out there for business and his business was to win. And well, that's a, we know how Brooks can get. Brooks can lock into that mode and it is over for everybody. Yeah. So I think it would be hilarious to watch Harmon. Um, and and I'll, again, I'll be the first to admit I would never have put Harmon up on my Ryder Cup, my Ryder Cup team. I he his he just doesn't hit it far enough. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have that moxie that some of the guys have, right? Some of that, you know, I'm I'm going to go out and beat you. Well, we right. haven't seen that up until at this point yesterday. So now that he's had that, 
now that he's shown that he can play over there, like bring bring me Brian Harmon and let all of those guys that tried to talk their smack to Brian, especially like T boxes and like cameras were picking it up and everything. Like, you know, they said or they asked him, like, hey, what were some of the things that were being said? And he's like, I, I can't repeat what they were saying it being said. And, like, <laughs> people were coming out and saying that he was in, like, oh, okay, geez. but that just scorched your guys. So what do you, what do you, what does that say? Like, I, yeah. I don't know. I just, bring me Brian Harmon. I love the idea of putting him and Brooks out there just one time, just to see, just, you know, give him a little best ball action. Let them go out there, do their thing, beat the other team, you know, eight and seven, and, you know, move on, get our points. Yeah, no, he's – I mean, he's absolutely – should be a lock for uh, for the Ryder Cup. And if, if he's not – because I think – so, like, there's still a couple of tournaments left before the Ryder Cup teams are solidified for at least the, the top six, right? Right now he's within that. I think it would take a lot from some of the guys outside of the top six for him to be bumped out of that. Um, in the event that he is bumped out and he's still playing decent golf, absolutely take him. He needs to be one of the captain picks. I know there's a lot of a lot of questions around the Ryder Cup team, and especially as we get closer to September um, and to that time frame when they're doing the coaches' picks and all of that. Like we'll definitely have more conversations about it. But as it stands today. He needs to be going over across the pond and, and <laughs> repping the USA um, because I think he's, again, like the the trash talk against him does not put him down, if anything. And like he said, it, it you know, propels him forward. Um, so not everybody's built like that. So, yeah, put him on a team with Brooks or anybody. He, he's very, again, on the outside, he's a very even-keeled guy. Uh, never too high, never too low, like you said. And um, yeah, man, I mean, he, he's legit. I can't say I knew much about him coming into this. Um, I did pick him in the in the pick him that we did, uh, that we always do for the majors. And uh, I picked him for Sunday because I had heard, you know, some decent things about him. He was a D tier player and kind of how we rank things based off of Vegas odds. And uh, I was like, yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll give Brian Harmon a shot. Don't really know too much about him, but heard good things about him. Um, and next thing you know, it's like, oh, I have the guy on Sunday. Not that it mattered, but I have the guy on Sunday that uh, that is the leader of this tournament. So um, shout out to him. Uh, it was cool to see. 